Hola, reyes y reinas, high kings and queens. I pray that today I find you excited to get activated with the Holy Spirit. If I don't find you excited, borrow some of mine. Um, I will tell you that I'm exhausted. <laughs> I do have excitement. Uh, today, as I was getting on my knees and I was like, Lord, I thank you for today. I do feel exhausted, but I thank you for giving me that supernatural strength in Jesus' mighty name. So whoever it is that needs strength, I'm praying for your strength, for you to have his power in any area of weakness. I'm going to get into today's prayer. I do not find you here on an accident i believe that this is a divine appointment by god so let's get into it today if you need some clarification revelation you need a solution i'm going to open in prayer and then we're going to get into uh the title is leaving behind moving ahead but um the one word that the lord really put in my spirit because of the scripture today is liberty so let me open in prayer father in the name of jesus we honor you for your word we thank you for your word activating and accomplishing what you sent it to accomplish today and every day that we get intimated intimate and activated in your presence and in your word lord we honor you for your uncommon unearned unexplainable peace in your presence protection partnerships prosperity um perspectives in jesus name holy spirit break out lord and thank you father for giving us life today we adore you we admire you lord Whatever sins we have been committing, we pray that you bring them to light, to revelation in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. We thank you for life. We thank you for our loans. We thank you for the trust that you trust us, and whether it's the power of influence, whether it's financial finances. We thank you for our homes, our children, our family. We thank you for unity and peace flowing within us, Father, from your presence. And that we have a shift in the atmosphere in your perspective to be freed in Jesus' name, we bring to you, Lord, today to have spiritual impartation, spiritual liberation. And that whatever may be bonding us, having us an, as an addict, whatever it is that is just has us in bondage, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus and we thank you in advance for freeing us today in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for the power that you give us to have revival and restoration in our lives. We speak the name of Jesus in any healing, in any of our hurting, any of our sorrows. Circumstances are changing right now in Jesus' name. Breakthrough is happening right now. Holy Spirit, we honor you and we thank you, Lord, for unity and peace flowing within us outward through everywhere we go, Lord, that there will be unity and peace. We bind and rebuke division in Jesus' name. Fear inside of us is fleeing in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, every curse over our lives is broken over our children, children's lives in Jesus' name. We receive it and believe it. Say amen because God is doing the impossible. We honor you, Father. We thank you, Father, for clearing up any hole in our soul, any break in our heart, and any um, block in our minds in Jesus' mighty name. We honor you and we thank you, Father, that we are going to move ahead and be freed, live in liberty as the way you created us to create for others, Lord. We are freed in Jesus' mighty name. We honor you, Lord, for your word, and we thank you for being a freeing God, freeing us from anything, any stronghold, any addiction, anything that has us in bondage, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a drug, whether it's a cigarette, whether it's alcohol, whether it's stress in Jesus' name or a relationship that is no longer serving our lives where we're growing more intimate with you in Jesus' name. We honor you. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We are reading today from Psalm 119, 45, which reads, I will walk about in freedom. Ooh, bring it, Holy Spirit, for I have sought out your precepts. And that's a behavior or thought. The precept, precepts. So we have sought out your ways. We have sought out your thoughts. We want heavenly thoughts. We will seek out your ways. We will meditate on your word, Lord. So um, let me give you real quick because freedom can mean the same as liberty. But I want to give you the definition of liberty, which is a noun. This is the noun. It's the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority of one's way, way of life, behavior or political views or someone's views. You could be um, in bondage because of someone's views. Maybe you're tired of explaining yourself in a relationship or maybe in your marriage or maybe in a career. You keep explaining your motives to somebody, but they keep misunderstanding them or because of their past traumas, they are creating a whole different scenario in their head. Or maybe it's you creating a whole different scenario in your head. So um, the, second, the, the second definition is the power of scope to act as one pleases. Mm. So the real meaning of liberty in the Bible definition is a positive respect. It consists in the possession of holiness 
with the will and ability to do what is right and good, what is pleasing to God. Such liberty is possible only in a renewed condition of the soul and cannot exist apart from godliness. So you have to have a renewed condition of your soul and your mind and the body will follow. So that's the Bible definition. And uh, another simple definition is a state of freedom, especially opposed to political subjection, imprisonment or slavery. Many countries don't have liberty as we do because we say as liberty and justice for all. So um, I want to get more into the detail of what this scripture is trying to inform us. Well, not trying, what it is informing us. Um, hold on. Sorry. My notes. What did I do? Sorry. <clears throat> oh, my screen. I was also looking up um, things that, things that uh, addicts have or behaviors. I'm sorry. Let me correct it. Behaviors of addicts because what was informing me or what was I was learning is that people that tend to live in sinful behavior if you have an addict or you have a stronghold over your life um it will have you acting in such a way that you're walking out of the will of God and it will have you acting moody loss of interest in normal things stress takes those things a lot of us are addicted to stress and we don't even know it we put so much on our plates we want to do so many things. We want to help so many people. We're not God. So we were created to fail. Psalm 119.45, the meaning is the psalmist expresses his desire to walk in freedom because of his commitment to seeking God's precepts, which is his thoughts, his ways, his behaviors, the way he wants us to behave. Um, a lot of things that I do in my life is what would Jesus do? It's like an old thing that people were there used to be bracelets that were made of what would Jesus do? And it's one thing that has helped me when I'm angry or stressed. It's I notice that I'll do things out of character and I normally won't listen to what would Jesus do because I'm corrupt in my mind with the inability or control of something, meaning that I've overwhelmed myself. So it's saying that we will walk in freedom for we have sought out his presence, his behavior, his ways, his thoughts, heavenly ways. What does he say in Bible? It says, um, we will focus on heavenly thoughts, the truth, what God says, what God created us to create. So um, let me see. I wrote all my notes. So it's a way of behavior. A way of behavior is God. Well, this today's devotion is saying leaving behind, moving ahead is the title. Um, leaving behind what is natural, what is what we normally will do in the flesh. Moving ahead to the supernatural, which is walking in faith. So it's the will or ability to do what's right, good, and pleasing in God's eyes is true liberation. So meaning if someone has offended you or someone has said something to you or done something to you or continues to do something to you, you're going to walk in liberty, meaning that you're not going to repay evil for evil. A lot of the times we have to love people from a distance because sometimes their thought process it can have us in bondage and trying to continuously, as I was mentioning, convince them of our motives or our actions because they have PTSD, which is they have traumas that have affected their mental thought process and they cannot think anything else other than what they've known or what they've experienced. Bring it, Holy Spirit. So let me get into um, the true freedom that what the scripture is trying to tell us is that when we are freed of sin, we are not a slave to our sin. We have hope. A lot of us are oppressed by people's opinions. A lot of us are oppressed by strongholds, addictions. Strongholds um, fortress, for strongholds create a fortress in our minds that have us in a small mind capacity, which is bondage. It's oppression. Your thoughts, if you have a small mind, you are not going to seek a relationship that advances you, encourages you, prospers you, you know, has peace. Because you have a fortitude of your mind, of a stronghold, of a process of what you've seen your parents experience, your grandparents. You understand what I'm saying? Like these are the 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 the, for, the, the mind. If you look at your mind, like you look at the brain, many of us have gates around it. We're in a prison mentality, and God has given us His Word, His presence, a partnership to be aligned with Him, to surrender with Him, so we can be freed in the Spirit. Therefore, we renew our minds on His Word. I have sought out your thoughts, your ways, is what he is telling us. Let me begin in today's devotional. Leaving behind, moving ahead. The author writes, here is a simple but profound truth. You cannot go where you are going without leaving where you have been. 
Many of us are in places physically, but our mind is somewhere else. Maybe you've been praying for a marriage and you're married already, but your mind is still on the traumatic thoughts of that last relationship. That is going to destroy the marriage you are in. I remember when I went to see a therapist, um, me and my husband, you know, she used to tell me before Jerry, meaning whatever happened, BJ, BJ before Jerry, it's like before Christ, BC, that was before this is new. You have to remind yourself, meditate on his words, seek out his ways. Our, the Holy Bible is a direction, guidance, teaching us to unlearn a lot of things we have to unlearn to get to our God-ordained destiny or to prosper or to flourish in the relationships or the assignments or the seasons that God has us in right now. You're in a season where God is preparing you for the next, but you keep reliving the past by your thoughts. You keep thinking about how that person did you dirty, how that person betrayed you, how that person was unfaithful, how that person, you know, didn't want the best for you. They probably didn't want the best for themselves. How are they going to want the best for you? I've mentioned many times, how can someone give you what they do not possess? Or they have not experienced, how can they create it for you? Bring your Holy Spirit. What must I leave behind in order to serve God with my whole life? You have to leave fears and traumas. You have to surrender him to him. Be like, Lord, I don't know how to live life in this renewed way. I'm going to read your word. Thank you for your direction, Father. Thank you for your miraculous signs and wonders. Thank you for where I'm at right now, Lord. I won't be here next year this time. I will be renewed. I will be healed. The block in my mind will be gone because I will have peace, Father, in your presence bring in holy spirit god is looking for runners who like paul will say whatever were gains to me now i consider the lost for the sake of christ whatever you lose for the sake of christ it had to go and whatever you lose for his sake he's going to empower you he is going to build your mind up when you read his word what does he say you are peculiar wondrously made magnificent there's so many promises he had a, a hope of future, uh, not to harm us, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, to give us a future and a hope. I always remind myself of that when I'm walking this one, I'm like, mm -mm, God didn't die, Jesus didn't die on the cross for me to be here struggling and living this life or staying in a relationship or having a friendship or having somebody that just constantly makes me feel like, the one thing that I'm walking through in this season that I recognize is that you will meet people, you will have relationships that you have in your life. And it's like, you got to constantly be reminding them or acknowledging, I love you. I'm not here to hurt you. Am I perfect? No. Sometimes will I say the wrong things? Yes. Sometimes I won't say anything because I don't want to say anything that is going to um, not in, in, not leave something good in the spirit. Because Bible says, it's not what you say, it's, just, it's how you make people feel. A loving word, a kind word, gives glory to God. A, a harsh word, it doesn't stir good in somebody. And what it's saying is, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Philippians 3, 7, 8. It's telling us to go in there. And it's telling us, but whatever were gains to me, now I consider the loss of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because surpassing worth is what I was saying. Imagine the freedom. Imagine the liberty you will experience when you are willing to lose that garbage. Whatever has to go. And every season and every assignment, things are having to go because God is making room for the new. You got to let go of those old thoughts. You got to let go of those old pains and heartbreaks and traumas. How do you let them go? I never knew how. I used to pray and be like, Lord, I don't want to think these things anymore. And then I would recognize that I would be around certain people that would talk about those things. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm trying to renew my mind. So I had to separate myself from a lot of people, places, and things. Bring it, Holy Spirit. When you are renewing your mind, which we have to do on the daily, you have to remove yourself from people, places, and things. Things that are going to continue to corrupt and bring the old way of thinking. 
You got to let go of the old. Got to get rid of the garbage. Whatever doesn't serve in our life anymore. As I mentioned many times, we have milk right in the fridge. You buy it fresh from HB. You look at the expiration date. You bring it home. After a certain amount of time, it's going to start stinking or it's going to smell because it's expired. It's no longer going to serve pur purpose in your fridge, your body, or <laughs> anywhere. You drink it, consume it, you're going to get sick. So it's the same way. You got to take out the garbage. If you throw it in the trash and it sits there, it's going to smell really bad. So you got to take out the trash. It, it, there's always trash being taken out. You, you dump it from your fridge. Oh, I got to pop back. Sorry. You dump it from your fridge into the trash can. You take out the trash. They come pick up the trash. They go dump it into a bigger place of trash and they dis, di, dispose of it properly. The same way we need to be reading things of our trash in our minds. We got to be reading things that we see. We got to be moving ourselves, renewing ourselves. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Think about running unhindered as you do the work God calls you to do. I'm going to tell you this season, I have so much that I do probably put on my plate. I feel called to a lot of it. I feel responsibility of it and, and balancing the priorities and the mispriorities. Sometimes you get caught up and ahead of yourself. And I recognize that when you have when you have distractions or you have hindrances that may be distracting you or causing stress in your life and and it's pulling you away from the responsibilities that God has you for has for you if you don't toss away the old junk from your past it's going to distract you where you're at right now and what happens when you're distracted you're pulling away from the relationship with God and your God ordained destiny and I'm recognizing, especially like I, this word couldn't be more relevant or relatable in my life right now because I'm learning like today there's somewhere that I have to go because that's it. I've come to my end of my rope. I've prayed. I've done everything. And God has been putting in my spirit where I have to go. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of us are in places where we're getting healing, but we keep going back to things that make us sick. And you have confusion because you're like, why is it that I'm seeking the word? I'm renewing my mind. I'm praying. I'm worshiping. I'm giving it all I got, but I'm still sick. I'm still in this process of I'm trying to renew my mind, but the past is still there. Maybe you're sleeping with the past. Maybe you're married to the past. Maybe you're in a relationship where you're trying to renew your mind and your best friend or your circle of influence is in the old train of thought. You're trying to become new, but they keep reminding you of the old. And I'm going to tell you, this season, I have been around a lot of people that I'm like, why do I have to com keep convincing this person that I love them? Why do I have to keep convincing this person of my motives? Why do I have to keep convincing this person that my intentions are pure? I'm trying to do everything I can to help you. And you still think that I'm out here trying to hurt you. And I'm recognizing that just because you are renewing your mind you're walking in freedom or you're seeking out the lord's ways behaviors and thoughts they're not going to be reciprocated you're growing you're maturing you're staying quiet you're being still and people are still giving you a piece of their mind they're still having to have that last word and tell you something that's going to make you feel bad about the person you're trying to become and I'm going to tell you, like, today, my heart is very heavy. And, you know, I was like, am I excited to go live today? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I am. Because every time we get intimate, every time we have this time together, we are tossing away old junk from our lives. Whether you're doing it in the spirit, you're doing it in the mind, or you're doing it in the physical, you're getting rid of things that got to go. And I, congratulations. I'm praying with you. I'm in agreement with you. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name because it's not easy. Especially when it's people that you love and that are very dear to your heart. And, and, you know, as God called Abram to leave his family, leave the people that he loves. It's hard because sometimes you're that leader. Sometimes you're the one guiding your family to freedom. And it's heavy. The responsibility is heavy. Heavy is who wears the crown. For real. So right now I feel a little heavy. <laughs> as you can see my hands out, I feel a little heavy. Um, if I find you feeling heavy, you still have the choice to choose Jesus and choose joy and choose to be excited to receive from him. I'm heavy. I feel stressed. I feel exhausted. But I'm still going to operate in my purpose. I'm still going to operate in my calling. Because why? Because I have a responsibility. So it says, toss away the old junk from your past and eliminate any way to get it back. Eliminate any way. 
you gotta go see a doctor because you keep going back and eating unhealthy you keep on getting sick go see a therapist go see a psychologist doctors are there because god sent doctors too a lot of people don't want to think that doctors are there no a lot of people say oh i don't react well to doctors <laughs> well you know what then stay sick in jesus name i rebuke that but i am not going to stay sick commit yourself to jesus christ and his cause and step out in faith what is stepping out in faith look like what is it looks like walking in freedom it means that yes that scares me but i'm going to step out and walk here you need to remove yourself from situationships because you keep getting sick now i was talking to someone not too long ago and they were telling me you know yeah i go see my therapist i go to church and then you know i go back home and it's like i'm sad again and that their therapist had literally told them like there has to come a point where you say enough is enough and i'm gonna walk away i'm gonna continue to try to better myself heal myself because what's important is you you have to heal yourself or not heal yourself, but you got to look for ways to heal yourself. Meaning that you got to go see a doctor, go see a doctor. Don't let that affect your ego. Edging got out. Get rid of that ego. Edging got out. God put doctors to help us. Let me carry on. Then logic tells you to stop doing the same old thing. Yes, because you will be in a pattern. It's like you're in your marriage and you have ups and downs and you don't go see a doctor. You just continue as praying and then, you know, okay, well, we're going to get along. No, you you can't. You you If you want change, you got to do different. You want different, do different. The only way we can be better is by knowing better, learning better, doing better. Do you want God to change your circumstances? Mm. We've been saying, we've been praying circumstances are changing. Do we want God to change them? He can change them. But if we don't have a transformation of our hearts or our minds, we're going to mess it all up again. There has to be a transformation in your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Especially your mind. Because your thoughts create who you are. As a man thinketh, he is, he will become, he will create, he will experience. That's Bible. Then seek change in your life. As you walk in freedom, God will take you to new and freedom-filled spaces, people, places, things. I uh, That's what I was saying. You have to remove yourself from people, places, and things. You have to get rid of. People, places, and things to advance, to transform. You keep on thinking of the same old things. You keep reading the same old things. I I, I like to see scary movies, or I used to like the Lord's healing me. Um, there's a lot of places that I see scary things and I want to go. And I'm learning now that if I go, the Lord puts in my heart, like, go. See what you pick up. You want to be renewed, but you keep going to the same old places because it's fun. You get a little thrill. Okay, we'll keep getting off on your thrills. Because the Lord has a, a thrill if you're supernatural. In Halloween, this time of season, we, you know, we look up supernatural ghosts and haunted tours and all these things. That was me. It used to be one of my favorite holidays. <laughs> and now I'm realizing that if I want to gain more Christ, I can't be putting myself in the demonic supernatural things. Is it easy? No. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. I'm learning that I need to put myself in the supernatural faith things, the supernatural heavenly things. So I can have my thoughts on him. I can't have my thoughts on him and worship and Sunday. And then, oh, on Friday, let me go to a haunted house. Because I did go to a haunted house this year. And I remember when I was walking in there, I was like, I felt convicted. I felt like, Lord, what am I doing? I'm renewed in Christ. I'm holy. I'm consecrated. But yeah, here I am. Pray for me. <laughs> if you go to a haunted house, I'm praying for you. That the conviction directs you. I was disobedient. I went to the haunted house um was i scared no i wasn't even scared of anything i literally walked in there in freedom and authority because i was like my holy spirit but then i'm like well holy spirit probably don't want me in these places so pray for me but i walked in freedom i walked in authority i literally led the group i was with but because i have the holy spirit and i know that ain't nothing that comes against me gonna harm me even though i put myself in harm's way spiritually pray for me uh, maybe that you're having that. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus. You're free from any train of thought that has you in the scary houses. Or as my grandson says, spooky season. He sees things. He's like, pumpkin, spooky. And I like dressing up for Halloween. I, I dressed up last year and the year before. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to dress up this year because uh, I was calling it. There was, what was there was something that I had put and it was something a ween. But it's like following or following Christ or whatever during Halloween because I think this year might be an angel. I don't know. The Lord's working in my heart. My husband's like, maybe we shouldn't dress up. I don't think we should be dressing up trying to hold me accountable. Um, today's quotes are 
But I, one thing I want you to know is that when you're freed from sin, 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 when you're freed from sin, you're not a slave. You become hopeful. You become joyous because you know that you got a future full of hope and not a future not to harm you. So may we think of freedom, liberty, not as the right thing to do as we as we like and please, but as the opportunity opportunity to do what is right. Peter Marshall wrote that. None but ourselves can free our minds. No one but you can free your minds, Bob Marley. Um, and today's prayers, Lord God, I want to drop you and I, us, we want to drop our old junk, our own train of thought, our old train of thought, our old ways, our old behaviors, old percepts, and be unhindered, not distracted, not held back in our walk with you, Lord. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for the liberty, Lord, for you and I and the newness that you bring in us in our minds and our spirits as we meditate in your word and prioritize our time with you, reading your word and in relationship with you and a Bible-based church and reading your word in Jesus' name. If you prayed that, well, there, here's a prayer. If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins, come into my heart. I make you, Lord, my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in my life. Thank you for the freedom, the liberty, the authority that we walk in freedom. Because you, Father, have freed us in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Father, for being a, a uh, freeing God, a liberating God. Thank you, Father, for your spiritual impartation in our lives that will free us. It will give us the power to be freed from any person, place, or thing that is hindering our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, give us miraculous signs and wonders. Give us a, a revealing this month. Give us a spiritual discernment of that prompting, don't go there. That conviction, Lord. And may we have the courage and the fortitude to obey you in Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that simple prayer. Put God first. That we do not walk in condemnation. Condemnation is what? When you fall into a place where you're just like, I sinned. I fell short. You stay there. I'm going to stay in bondage. I'm going to still behave in my old self. No, in Jesus' name. I rebuke and bind that. Um, one thing that I was studying was how addicts behave they have financial problems inability or control or stopping of a habit uh more they always want more they're never fulfilled or satisfied increased tolerance when you're taking drugs you have an increased tolerance so you got to take more and more and more because i ain't doing nothing for you intense cravings these are things that have us in strong in strongholds or in bondage intense cravings loss of control you're just saying whatever You've lost the control. You have no self-control. Self-control is what? One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Self-control will stop us from doing things. The Lord will give us that power. Loss of interest in hobbies or people. Other people that you normally love and want to hang around with. That's where we go into isolation. That's where the enemy loves to be and lives. Neglecting responsibilities. Not taking care of prioritizing things that you have responsibility over. Remember, we're kings, excuse me, kings and queens. We have a responsibility to reign well, reign responsibly. You start neglecting the, the responsibilities of your life and you start walking out of God's will. Um, hold on, sorry, my chicken scratch. Hi to criticism. I think it's criticism. Hi, I don't, I don't understand them. Bring the Holy Spirit. High openness to experience low agreeable and low consistentness and consciousness. So these are things that uh, addicts, and this is things that we do when we're seriously doing things that God told us not to do. Salience, mood modification, uh, toleration, withdrawal, symptoms, conflict, and relapse. These are all toleration. These are all things that come with addicts. These are all things that come with bondage. You start just not feeling satisfied. You want to do something. You want to do more and more of it. Sex. Because it's filling a void for you. These are all things that are going to pull us away from God. These are things. That, these are behaviors that are not walking in freedom. They're walking in bondage. You, you're moody. You say things. You're critici you criticize. You say things subconsciously just to criticize other people. You have lost of interest of things that you normally used to have interest in. You start neglecting your responsibilities and neglecting people. You basically lose all gratitude. And you start becoming a drainer of people. So you start stressing people, taking from people you don't want to add to them. And these are all things that will increase you walking away from the Lord. So I pray that this gives you great revelation if you're walking in bondage, these behaviors that you may be experiencing uh, or you may be creating. Let me see if I have more of my notes. Um, so it says, 
there it is, the six characteristics of addiction are salience, mood modification, toleration, withdrawal symptoms, conflict, and relapse. Addiction is a condition that affects a person in many different ways. While there are numerous characteristics of added, added addictive behavior, there are six things that are most dominant. Um, I want to look up what salience means real quick to give us some more insight. The quality of being particularly noticeable or important. So you, you need that. You need to feel important. And that's why a lot of us continue to go back to things that make us feel important. And these are things that you start walking out of the will of God and you start seeking selfish. Sin is in the skin. It's in your body. It's in your flesh. These are things that you want that they're watch out for these signs in your life, basically. Always wanting more, financial problems, inability to stop, increased tolerance, incre intense cravings. Maybe you're craving sex, food, going to a certain place, alcohol, cigarettes, loss of control, loss of interest in hobbies or other people, neglecting your responsibilities, as we were talking about. These are all things that, behaviors that we do for a certain type of behavior that we're doing that is walking out of the will of God. God doesn't have us free for having those things. That's what bondage has us. That's what strongholds have us acting like. Walking in freedom is having the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is joy, peace, love, goodness, self-control, patience, gentleness. These things will help us overcome these things, but they have, we have to choose Jesus. And remember, choosing Jesus is joy. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, pity, and the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord will walk us out of these things. Because we're like, no, I, I didn't, God didn't die on the cross. Jesus didn't die on the cross for me to be living this way. So people that are more likely to use drugs or do things to manipulate, lie, steal, cheat are high uh, neuroticism, low agree agreeableness, and low consciousness are consistent currents of drug use. Though these such patterns due to common familial, fam familial, fam family influences rather than effects of personally personality sorry so i pray these give you great revelation inside and clarity where maybe i'm doing something and this is not really me i have mood swings i don't understand i don't have self-control but remember as bob marley said none but ourselves can free our minds you have to surrender your mind your spirit i you you're in living in some type of bondage drug use maybe something nobody knows about i pray that it gives you great revelation and the words to speak Remember, open in your acts, prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Asking God what it is. Begging God. Maybe, Lord, I heal me in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Father, for your word today. I pray that you recognize that October is the completeness, divine order month. It's a, it's a month of supernatural and natural, the completeness of the supernatural perfection. God is perfecting you. He is doing order in your life. Be obedient. So God bless you, kings and queens. I pray this blessed you, whoever it is that God prompted you to share this. Remember, our promptings lead us to our promises. They were sharing something at church yesterday that they did something that God prompted them. And little did they know that something that they went to go do was for someone. They had no idea that would hold the keys into advancing them in an area that they had been praying for. So I'm going to tell you, when God calls you to go do something, that's a prompt. There's a promise tied to it. There's a promise that you've been envisioning. There's a promise that you need to get in your life and it's going to happen by the, what he prompts you to do. You're not going to understand. You're not going to under, you're, you need to just obey. So God bless you, kings and queens. If God prompted you to share this, please be obedient. Remember, conviction is direction. If God's refreshed you through this uh, devotional, please be obedient in refreshing others. Those who refresh others will too be refreshed. So God bless you, kings and queens. Reign responsibly. I still don't have my crown yet. I'm waiting on it. Reign responsibly. Fix your crown. Steward well your talents, gifts, anointings, your social media posts. Whatever God is calling you to do, be obedient. I'm praying for you. I'm in agreement. In Jesus' name, may y'all be blessed. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you for your time today. If you're walking in stress, I'm praying for you. That the Lord reveals where you need to reprioritize, where you need to be more intimate. Remember, prioritizing your time with God is the one thing that you need to do. You're called. You must do. And he will give you the guided instructions, directions, teachings, learnings of everything you need to be doing in this assignment in this season. So you can advance in the next season and advance others to free others. You walk in freedom so you can free others. So God bless you, kings and queens. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.